Welcome back, friends. In this video, we are putting the finishing touches on the consoles we've been working on. That includes painting walnut black. I know, that sounds crazy, but it looked really stinking good. And right before delivery, Davis has a breakdown and gets caught in a trap that a lot of younger beginner woodworkers fall into. You'll want to hear how he pulled himself out of that. And finally, we deliver the two consoles. They turned out so good. I can't wait for you to see them. Let's go. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. All right, new day, new shirt. I was gonna say new Bucky's shirt, but bottom line today we have to spray finish. Uh, if I wanna have a chance at completing this on time, it's currently Wednesday morning. This gets delivered Friday morning. So I wanted to get finished on today, have a whole extra day tomorrow to do hardware, final touches. Yeah, I've got to remake the drawer fronts for this guy. The record player cabinet's pretty much done. It's ready for finish, but hopefully we should have finish on this afternoon and uh, yeah, tomorrow we can just do final assembly and we'll be done. We'll see. I'm very tired. I didn't think we could do it, but I think we made it. I think we're ready to spray finish. Just double check our list here. So I've assembled with hardware, I've disassembled. It is ready for finish, I've sanded it too. I've also done wood filler. I've also sanded this. I haven't done cable management because I'll wait later to do that. So disassemble and finish and sand. So I think we are ready officially to start spray and finish. The one thing though, I gotta clean this garage out. It is nasty. It's been a long time since I've blown it out. I hate doing this because uh, it always gets my allergies messed up and everything, but I'm gonna get the leaf blower, open the garage door and just let her have it. All right. 
right, well, uh, just got done spraying the clear finish on all these cabinets and their doors and everything, and man, this thing is starting to look good. But there was a minute there, just in the last 10, 15 minutes, I fell into the same trap that a lot of us fall into, and I just kept saying, I can make it better, I can make it better, I can make it better. Um, and just, man, that's such a toxic way to think because you can always make it better. It's handmade furniture. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna look like it came off of an assembly line. You can spend weeks and weeks and weeks on it and it would still never be perfect. And so I just wanted to share that with y'all because you guys like it when I share stuff like that. I mean, always, 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 I'm fighting the urge to make it better, to make it, to do a better job. Not that I'm doing a bad job, not that I'm cutting corners, but it's, it's a delicate balance of, is the customer gonna care or notice? Is it up to your standards? Is it up to your business's standards? Is it up to your customer's expectation? And this is dang good furniture, and I'm happy, and I'm, and, and I'm proud to put my name on it, but it's just that constant plaguing of, can I do it better? Can this be better? Can I sand this again? Can I sand it down and respray the whole thing? Like some crazy thoughts pop in your head and some of us like to beat our chest and say, yeah, I'll spend eight weeks on a project till it's perfect, but it's not giving you anything. It's just hurting your mental health. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all. Your furniture is good enough. You are good enough. You don't need to spend 30 hours on something just to get it perfect because it's not supposed to be perfect. These chamfers on the bottom of these feet, they're not all perfect. They don't look perfect, they shouldn't look perfect. They're there and it's just part of the story of the furniture and your customers should be caring a lot more about that than they are about perfectly production pieced uh, furniture. If, if that's what they're after, tell them to go to Ikea because that's not what you make. You gotta find the right customers. So I know these guys are gonna be more than happy to take delivery of this furniture because they hired us. Yeah, we build furniture and yeah, that's what we're giving them, but what they really wanted was to help support us and help us with our dream of building a furniture business. You're judging your work according to the standards at the top of the woodworking game. And you don't realize that the quality of your work, even as a moderately experienced woodworker, is so much closer to their quality of work, the Matt Cremona's, the Mark Spagnolo's, the, the Stumpy Nubs, the Johnny Brooks, than it is to Ashley or Ikea or the other furniture manufacturers. And yet we're all wringing our hands over charging the same price that Ashley and Ikea do. The old guys in the comments, they rake us over the coals all the time because we're relatively inexperienced, but yet we're pretty decent salespeople. They think that your skill as a woodworker is directly related to your ability to sell and what price you should charge. And those two things are not related. Please go watch our Maker's Money videos if you're confused on that. So how do you tell when something is good enough and pull yourself off of it? That's a hard question to answer. You've just gotta look at the expectations the customer is expecting and say, if I have met those expectations, then it's good enough. I don't need to spend more time on it. You should always give more value than what you're charging, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to run a business, you gotta be accountable to the bottom line. And if you're wasting more time in labor, then the business is suffering because of it. So I guess all I'm trying to say is, I feel you, we still get that feeling. We've started a business twice doing this and we still get that feeling. You just have to constantly fight it and make sure that you're focusing on the customer's expectations, not on your own unrealistic expectations. The Stud Stack is our private community for makers who run a business. It's a place where you can share, collaborate, and grow your business with other makers just like you. Join over a hundred business owners committed to growing their business and sharing what they learn. It's a place where you can ask questions, get advice, or share your lessons to help others. So in addition to the community, what else do you get in the stud stack? Well, we also do tons of giveaways. We do gift cards, books, all sorts of things. Like one, one month we gave away a MacBook Pro, another month we gave away a thousand dollar gift card. We're always trying to give back and add value to the community. We also post extra videos. We help facilitate discussions and get you thinking about things that you might be overlooking if you're new to running a business. If you're more experienced, we dive deep into some topics so that you can really make the most out of whatever it is that your business is doing. There's a lot of extra value in addition to the enormous community we have in the stud stack. It's a paid group, so only the people who are serious about learning, sharing, and making money are in the community. It's not for everybody. We know there's free groups out there, but Sometimes you get what you pay for. If you're interested, there's a link below the like button in the description. Otherwise, you can just go right to studstack.net to jump in. We're gonna do the unthinkable. We're gonna paint walnut. 
for a couple reasons. Number one, because it's what we had more of. Number two, it's 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 walnut plywood, so I don't feel like it's actually that bad. Um, but this, that's solid walnut for sure. So we feel a little bad. Not too bad. I had to wear my walnut shirt for it too. Yeah, it helps cancel it out. Well, I've officially lost my woodworking license. That delivery went so well. Oh my gosh, I was, I don't know why I always get worked up when I deliver furniture. I think that they're gonna hate it or they're not gonna like it, but man, they were in love with it. We didn't do a lot of filming there because their house, you know, still unboxing and getting moved in and everything, but we'll definitely be back, take some better photos for the website and everything. Um, yeah, we're just super happy to get this one on the books, especially because it's the first time we've ever made anything uh, publicly, like modern style. So people can see more than just farmhouse style stuff, which is starting to go by the wayside, even in Houston. So uh, the only thing we have to do is when we move the doors back and inset them into the cabinet some more, I never went back and adjusted the size of the shelves. So I got to cut the shelves to size. Um, they were totally cool with that. So I got to fix that, edge band those, refinish them, and come back to their house again. So um, really excited that we got this project done, completed and finished. It turned out so nice. This furniture looks so good. I did not want to load it up and give it away. But anyway, uh, super excited. And yeah, man. Ask me how I do it. I just stick to the